of the morning, Dan, and in for Amy this morning is our friend Charles Thomas, former ABC7 political reporter. Uh, Charles, uh, just a bit of a statistical note. Uh, from July of 21 to July of 22, Cook County, on a per capita basis, led the nation among large counties, population more than a million, led the nation in population loss. Mm. Yeah. Uh, about 70,000 people left. Now, if you say, well, 5.1 million people, 70,000 people leave. That's a little bit more than 1%. What's the big deal? People come and go, just like businesses come and go. Um, the perspective you have on this long-running and increasing exodus from Cook County, from Chicago, from Illinois. Well, you know, a lot of, I guess some of them are going to, when you talk about leaving Cook County, uh, you, 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 you got people going to other states, quite frankly. And the ironic part about it, as you all know, is that the states that are leading in terms of destination are Texas, Florida, Tennessee, so-called uh, red states and you you wonder you know you you know what what are people thinking are these people who i mean a lot of people take their their uh, liberal illinois or cook county political politics with them to other places and people in those other places lament that because they they don't they don't want that to happen but they're going the places where the taxes are lower, and there's some economic vitality. You know, and I, and the en environs are a bit safer. Perhaps. Yeah, uh, environs are safer. But you know, if you you look at Illinois and 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 what's happening here, uh, particularly to our manufacturing base, it's it's not growing. I mean, they just built a 3.5 billion, or they announced plans to build a 3.5 billion dollar battery plant, lithium or electric car battery plant in Michigan, in Michigan. I mean, Michigan's no red state. Uh, you know, Wisconsin got the Foxconn uh, plant. I don't know when, when they're going to start building it, but, you know, they competed with Illinois. Right. And, uh, and, uh, this, is, this is the point that uh, our friend John Cass makes, one of the points he makes in his most recent column. He writes, the thing about having real money you don't have to hang around in suburban Cook County or Chicago and be abused by angry leftist Democrats. Yeah. yeah. And, you exactly. know, they, I tell you what they're doing here. It's since uh, in the last five years, at least since J.B. Pritzker has been governor, the industries that are growing in Illinois are gambling, gaming, and all the new casinos and the, the bars that have the slot machines. And you have uh, gaming, weed. Yeah. Yeah, we're got a big, you know, mm -hmm. our weed industry is 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 uh, booming. Abortion and, and abortion, mm -hmm. gaming, weed, and abortion. Yeah, we're a mob economy. Do you want to le live in a place like that? I understand why people are are leaving uh, Cook County and really Illinois. All right, let's fold our friend John Cass into the conversation. John Cass, JohnCassNews.com is where you get the piece I was referencing and all his other work and the work of his contributors. John, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. It's wonderful to be here with you guys on the edge of Holy Week, and I'm with the dark forces of Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I, John, how, how are you feeling, man? Hey, good, good guys. Uh, Charles, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm feeling well, and I've I've got these I've got these uh, vicious sprites at uh, uh, the the uh, the ability to. Uh, lab that I'm going through uh, through uh, therapy every day, and they're kicking my ass. And uh, it's great to be with them, and great to be with you. Well, uh, the, the, so setting aside the mental therapy for a second, um, <laughs> they, uh, you're also going through physical therapy. You're saying, yeah, physical oh. therapy. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know they they lie to you like the uh, Shirley Ryan ability labs. The girls are mostly uh, the women. Young women are mostly are professionals and mostly, I'd say, uh, Irish Catholic. And you could see them on any football field or uh, or softball field screaming at kids, saying, 
Give me five more. Give me ten more. You <laughs> right. promised ten more. <laughs> They're no, merciless. It's, it's yeah. the same mentality. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's talk about uh, tomorrow's election and uh, oh. this piece that you wrote, uh, trying to sort of frame it, sum it up for us. And you seized upon a comment that uh, BLM Brandon Johnson made recently that hasn't gotten much attention. Why not? Why, w- why would it get attention from a DC press corps that's uh, you know in the fold? But uh, the the quote was, this is about, meaning the election, this is Brandon Johnson speaking, this is about black labor versus white wealth. That's what this battle is about. How did you interpret that as it as it needs much interpretation? I interpreted like much of white wealth interpreted. I'm gone. <laughs> They're left. They've left. You know, as you as you pointed out in your uh, earlier earlier opening, the. Uh, the people have left Cook County. They've left. They, they don't have to take this crap anymore, and they're gone. And that's unfortunate for those who are like even leaning conservative. Sooner or later, they're going to have every, everybody is going to be blue, and they're all going to be singing from the same hymn, hymnal. And uh, unfortunately, so give us uh, your perspective on the choice tomorrow. I mean, the Exodus piece, the. You know that that I don't. There's not like uh, there have not been a lot of defenses of the wealthy white because it doesn't generate much sympathy. There's not much political capital to be had there. Right. Um, right. So 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 Paul Vallis and how he how he puts together fifty percent plus one tomorrow. I I count on the uh, rationality of the electorate. Uh oh, you're and done. I know, I know, and I see that if. Bellis is not elected. If Stacey Davis Gates and uh, Tony Preckwinkle are favored by, with the election of their puppet, Brandon Johnson, uh, I w- just look at a toilet when you press the, the, the plunger and see it go round and round and round. Mm-hmm. Because that's what we'll see. That's what we'll see in, in Chicago. And unfortunately, it's a great city. And for all that, you know, we know so many good people. I mean, so many good people that call your show. And uh, and uh, I, I feel sorry for them. I do. You, you know, John, that that black labor, white wealth line, <laughs> man, that, yeah. that is straight out of the CTU playbook, man. That that was written You're straight out of CTU, Das Kapital. Man. Yeah. 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 That, that was, man. <clears throat> I, I put in a line in that column Sunday at johncastnews.com uh, about the Mensheviks because I remember Dan Prof telling all, all of us, his listening audience, that yeah, years ago, that the hard left, the like Bolsheviks in Russia, uh, confronted the Mensheviks, which were sort of like a hard left but not as hard. And the Mensheviks were destroyed. Uh, and that's what's going to happen here once Daisy Davis Gates and her friends take over. If they do, uh, all these uh, liberals that listen, that watch uh, religiously, Winnetka talking to Will Matt or whatever that uh, mm. station is that denigrated Proft and company by saying they're dark forces in politics, those people will be destroyed too. That's how they work, that's how they roll. Let me uh, get your reaction to something. Uh, Charles and I were talking about the mayor's race earlier in the program. And here's my my argument sort of on both sides. Different groups of inside the Thunderdome players uh, lining behind Uh Brandon Johnson and Paul Vallis. But the outcome is more or less the same. And this is I know you share this as a favorite line to describe Chicago politics. One of the great lines that's ever been written. And it was from a great show that got cut short the boss with Kelsey Grammer and the the line was uh, change on the outside to protect continuity on the inside it's the appearance of change and so Brandon Johnson presents the appearance of change like some sort of empowerment for people of color well that comes through the unions that have run the show and have been running the show and so how is that going for empowerment for for people of color not very well and Paul Vallis represents sort of the corporatist class that have been sort of the Mensheviks of for the last two <laughs> decades and now are decrying 
crime and other uh, maladies in the city because it's starting to affect them, which is not particularly persuasive or compelling. And and I, I just go, for example, I mean, Paul Vallis, his field program, his get out the vote program. I know this from people inside. I mean, it's being run by Dominic Longo, who's a goon from the 33rd Ward and the old Dick Mel guys. So so how does the guy relying on old time insiders from a bygone era in Chicago when the Irish controlled everything? How is he going to be any more of a positive change agent than Brandon Johnson is? It just seems he'll be less of a negative change agent than Brandon Johnson. But that's also not very persuasive. I don't know if I know that the, the your favorite uh, news station, WBEZ, uh, has uh, seized upon the Dominic Longo story. I, I don't really know if people give two figs about Dominic Longo. Uh, they don't even know who he is, but that's not my point. My right. point is with the reality of it. The, the reality of it is that you're always going to have people in politics who are insiders who are trying to uh, practice their wares, right? Show off their skills and talents mm-hmm. and make some money. Mm-hmm. And that's what these guys are doing. Whether... But the larger issue of uh, uh, of the technocrats versus the uh, versus the uh, communist class, I think that holds well. That 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 is a good observation, and it holds well. The question is: Can the city, can Chicago, sustain itself and survive uh, with uh, the hard left running things? I don't think it can. I think that people should be getting out to vote. I know that. They're upset with uh, Vallis because he's he's uh, not supportive of the governor of Florida or what, whatever. But if you want the city to survive, you get out and vote and get everybody that you know to vote and vote on in, on this election. Otherwise, it's circling the drain. That's it. That's really it. I mean, it's that's based on fifty years of of my career. <laughs> You you asked the question at the end of your piece: Is self preservation the greatest instinct, or is it our tribal politics? Has there yeah. ever has there ever been an example where self preservation in Chicago has trumped tribal politics? In your life, uh, I don't think I uh, rhetorical questions are that way, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do something that's precedent setting tomorrow. You're hoping right. is, is essentially the point. I, I hope, I hope so because if, if people don't come out and vote and yeah, I know it's, it's horrible to ask them to grit their teeth and close their nose and, and vote. But other, the, the alternative is uh, Tony Preckwinkle and Kim Fox telling you what your life is going to be like for the next four years. Do you want that? Because that's a real story. When mm-hmm. Bellis, if Bellis is elected, Kim Fox and Tony Preckwinkle will be under threat. That's why Brandon Johnson is even here to protect them from the threat of being found out or highlighted as uh, losers or people who weren't really pushing uh, the, the public interest in terms of. Uh, criminal justice you, you know you also, that right? you also you, you, you also you also make the point in your piece about Vallis with uh, the uh a cross-section of public officials including many members of the city council who've endorsed his candidacy that oh. yeah there's at least a chance that paul Vallis could put together the sort of uh racial coalition that maybe could get us beyond to some extent not to entirely because that's but to some right. extent beyond race and talking and in, in, in addressing sort of structural problems. If he loses, uh, he'll lose because of the Dan Proft edict that happened early on in this campaign. If he loses, it's because Brendan Johnson created, uh, you know, we have Bernie Sanders and all these outsiders uh, coming in here, ginning people up, getting them ready to vote. And, Paul Vallis did not want what I wanted, and I think what you wanted, is a refer- this election as referendum on these policies. I wanted him to be going after school choice, hammer and tongs, 
in support of school choice, going after the the public unions, hammer and tongs to tell people that this is their future and you have to fight them in order to have some semblance of, of survival. And he didn't do that. He wanted to have a, a sort of a little, uh, you know, not as an aggressive campaign as I would have wanted him to run. You know, he's my friend, but he doesn't listen to me every every sec, every minute. And uh, that's what I wanted. So if he if he doesn't win, it's probably going to be about that. John Cass, johncassnews.com is where you get his work and the work of uh, so many other contributors, johncassnews.com. John, thanks so much for joining us. Now uh, go back and do 10 planks as your uh... – I'll do 10 planks and I'll listen to your – the dark forces rising up from here. <laughs> I'll, I'll put on uh, I'll put on some Eastern Orthodox prayer just to protect myself against your voices. Very okay, good. thanks, hey, Mark. Hey, John, John keep keep on writing, man. We we we've thanks, missed you man. these past several weeks, and it was good to see you uh, back in the game. I got my shillelagh, and I'm leaning on it, and I, I can swing <laughs> it. So that's all I need. Thanks, good. guys. John Cass joined us on the Turnkey Deprovincial Line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories. 